me. I just realized that I said Karibu Sana and I did not factor in the fact that there might be some people who don't understand Swahili. So Karibu Sana means uh, welcome and um, yeah, apologies for that. So today's speaker is um, called Ngudi Mwenda. He's a statistician on sampling standards and methods at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. And a little bit about his uh, biography is that um, he holds a Bachelor of Science in Statistics and a Master of Science in Applied Statistics from uh, JIGWAT, and that means uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. He's currently pursuing another Master's of Science in Health Economics from the University of Nairobi, um, and he's set to graduate in December. And he's also finalizing on his PhD in Biostatistics from our university, also set to graduate in June. So Ngugi has worked in the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics from 2012 up to as a statistician in different departments and in various capacities. So um, please join me in welcoming Ngugi um, as he puts uh, us through the session. And yeah, Ngugi, uh, back to you. So let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that uh, uh, great introduction. Uh, this is me. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Ngugi again. I work for the Bureau of Statistics as a statistician. Um, so I think today's session, the main purpose of today's session uh, is basically to show you how we use R at the at the, at the Bureau of Statistics, that's the Central Bureau of Statistics. The national, uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the organization which is tasked in collecting and disseminating official data. So my today's talk will be based more towards on how we use R uh, to complement other softwares and uh, how we use R uh, to do some uh, geospatial kind of, I'll not really call it analysis, but some kind of uh, quality check for the data. Uh, this may be interest. You may have an interest in this. Uh, maybe you have some shape files somewhere. You need to uh, do a survey. Uh, so you want to know: Did my people really get to uh, the place where they're supposed to do the survey? Because uh, uh, remember, uh, when you're disseminating your data, if you did a sampling for a given area then it's always good to ensure that the people who are sent to that given area to collect the data, they actually went to the right areas and they collected uh, the, the, they collected data from the uh, required areas. Uh, so today I'm, uh, I'm going to show a bit of what we do here, uh, how we, how we uh, basically how we use R to complement other softwares. So we'll be running some code, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you guys, you have, you have your, you, you have, you have, you have some codes that uh, you know I shared with you. Uh, so the codes have been assured they are running. Uh, so well, maybe you'll allow me to kindly deviate a bit from uh, uh, just a bit uh, in that uh, I'll be, I'll not, I'll, I'll not, I'll not use the the markdown. Eh? I'll, I'll allow me just to uh, use my codes uh, in my machine. You no, know, the way they are in my machine. So before I start, before we get, we are, we are going to be interchanging between R, uh, R and uh, there's another software uh, which is really helping us uh, uh, in uh, collecting quality data because the Bureau of Statistics is more about quality. So at uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, we are tasked in collecting uh, official uh, statistics uh, from, uh, from the country. And uh, one of the areas that I'd like to talk about today, okay, we use R in various departments. Like now this is sampling standards and methods. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate how we use R in our, in our department. There is some other area called macroeconomics. Uh, there's a macroeconomics department. There's a population uh, uh, directorate. Uh, there's a production directorate. And they use R in various ways. So I think uh, it will be interesting in inviting them and seeing how they use you know, R in, uh, doing their, 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 their statistics. So today I want to focus on a very a key point. Uh, this is the issue of the sampling, because 
uh, you know, uh, before you do a survey, uh, well, there are two main ways of collecting data um, and uh, producing estimates. And one of the ways is you can either collect information from the whole country through a census, or you can decide to use a sample from that given population. So how do you ensure that uh, the population that is sampled, or how do you, how, or rather, how do you ensure that the information which is collected from that population, the sample population, is actually representative? Now, if, for example, I create 200 clusters, uh, they are distributed all over the country. Uh, you send people to collect data in those clusters. Eh? If by mistake, uh, this person didn't collect information from the cluster they're supposed to collect, then that means uh, when you're calculating the, the estimates, eh? uh, probably they could be biased, right? Uh, uh, I have a colleague, uh, he's called Noah. He's uh, a good guy in a small area estimation. And uh, he'll tell you if you don't have the correct estimates from the given uh, you know, uh, sampling units eh? or the regions which have been selected, eh? then you are not able, you can't be able to produce uh, correct estimates. Definitely they, they are going to be biased in one way or the other. So today I want to show you uh, how we go about that. And I'll begin by saying that uh, we did a census in 2019, which was successful uh, using the uh, copy devices. Um, and we got our numbers in a period of around three months. So from these numbers, you cannot do a census every time. Now, like that census, uh, um, uh, it costed um, really a large substantial of, of, of the national budget, yeah? So after the census, we need to create clusters uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we are able to collect information from Kenyans, which is still uh, which is still representative. So in this case, we are tasked in creating like ten thousand clusters. So the process which I'm going to show you today is what we are using, what you what you are doing right now, what you are doing currently uh, in creating these ten thousand these ten thousand clusters. So we set to start data collection. Uh, tomorrow, you've already done the trainings. So I'm just demonstrating to you uh, the systems we have designed and how we hope to process our data and how we process, how we hope to uh, do monitoring of our data. So mostly today, we're not going to really to deal with a lot of analysis. So it's not about a lot of statistical jargon, but basically to show you what we do so that you people, as you use our secondary data, uh, you have confidence that the data that we produce, or rather the data that we give to you, uh, they are correct and uh, they are representative in the whole country. So just allow me to project. So first of all, I'm going to begin with, uh, with uh, what you're using to collect uh, uh, this information. So I'm just going to project, just going to share my screen. Um, so will be changing between uh, these softwares and, uh, and R. So I want to begin with uh, mentioning about a software you're using to collect the data. Uh, it's called Survey Solutions. So what is happening is from the two, around, around, uh, 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 around close to 200,000 EAs, we selected 10,000 to be representative in the whole country. So we have four components, component one, two, three, and four. So the first component has 2,500 uh, uh, EAs. So we need to create clusters from those given EAs. Now, remember now an EA is uh, now the, the smallest unit which you are using for uh, the purpose of uh, accounting people, for the purpose of the census. So from that EA, uh, our clusters needs to be between uh, 50 and 149 uh, households in a, in every given in every given clusters, uh, and it's from these uh, households whereby we usually do our sampling. So from these 150, uh, depending on the financial ability and uh, the type of the survey, uh, we sample from these uh, these 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 clusters. Eh? And that's why you always hear that our uh, when we release our data, eh, we talk about uh, the multi the multi stage the multi stage kind of sampling, and uh, people know us as the people, uh, uh, you know, those guys who collect uh, information uh, from, uh, from 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 uh, 
from the country using a cluster. So if you go around the country, you talk about a cluster, they associate a cluster with the KNBS. Great, so for this particular exercise, uh, we are fully digital for the last, uh, the last sensor says we have been using paper to do this, what I'm going to do. So we have been able to program uh, uh, what, I'm, what I'm about to show you. We have programmed this from scratch. So this is Kenyan made uh, for Kenyan consumption. Uh, so we have two parts. There is the lister and the mapper. Uh, so the lister is supposed to do the actual uh, listing uh, in the whole in the whole cluster, and the mapper is supposed to pick uh, the the features which are in that particular uh, EA, and also uh, to find out if a given EA uh, requires segmentation. Uh, so. Uh, Briefly, I just want to take you briefly through, uh, th through, through what we are doing. So when these two people get to the cluster or rather to the EA, uh, each of them have their own assignments that they have been given. So the first thing is, how do we get to the EA? That's the first question. So if you can see my screen, yeah, if you can see my screen, I want to open the listers tab. Eh? This is a listers tab. See, it's written lister here. So before I start the interview, I need to find out where the cluster is. So this is, so from my office here, if I click on show location, uh, this it shows me uh, where the where where the cluster is. So if I want to move to the cluster. So this is a this is a sampled cluster, right? That's a sampled cluster. Uh, so I need like one hour, forty one minutes, uh, from my office at Real Towers, uh, to get to the cluster. So that's the first that's the first that's the first point. Now, how does this information help? Remember, you guys are statisticians, and uh, you know data does not just fall from up, you know or not every time you guys use secondary data. Sometimes you want to do a primary study. So because the data does not fall from heaven, then you know these are the beginning points. So for you to ensure that uh, this person goes to the cluster, then you need to guide them on exactly where the cluster is, right? So this helps a lot in terms of budgeting, because uh, you can see, uh, I need one hour for one minutes. Uh, this is 65 kilometers. So if you're doing any budgeting, then this one comes in handy. Because you know exactly from here to the cluster, I'll, I'll use like 65 kilometers. Okay, so I go back. Uh, I open, I open my, I'll open my interview. So I'm gonna do this very fast. So, um, this tells you where the cluster is. This cluster 999, uh, in Kenya, uh, EA name, I can say Gigiri or Giti or whatever. It's a rural cluster. So if I open on the structure information, uh, the first thing I need is to record my time. Then there's an action there, cluster this in uh, this county and the EA name is Gigiri. You can do a quick count. Now, why are we doing a quick count? We are doing a quick count to ensure that the households which are in that particular a cluster or EA, rather EA, because we are creating we are creating a cluster from the EA. The EA was used for EA was used for uh, mapping the whole country, uh, including um, uh, the real enumeration. So, for the EA, we need to find out because you see, we did the first. We did the first mapping in 2017. So in 2017, uh, for those, maybe in 2017, I was not married. I was sitting at my father's or my mother's house. Then right now I, I got a girl, I married. Uh, she's cooking for me. So we have a different cooking arrangement. Therefore, in 2017, in our homestead, we had like one, one household because I was eating at my mother's. Now my wife has joined me. So my wife is cooking for me. I'm giving her instructions. So she's picking instructions from me. Uh, she's cooking for me. Uh, she's sleeping under my roof. So I'm a different household. So in that case, 
if in 2017, uh, my homestead had one household, now there are two households. So what does that mean? All that means is the increase in the number of households has an implication, a direct implication uh, on the creation of the clusters. Because you're saying our clusters, they need to be between 50 and 149 households. So you look at 2017 and now, there could be some increase in the population. There could be some increase in that, in that uh, given uh, in that in that in that given in that given cluster. Or for example, in a rural, let, let, let's let's look at let's look at an urban example. Uh, in 2017, uh, I had begun a building a flat, so it didn't have anybody there. So the structure was captured, and maybe let's say the ground floor was occupied. Now that floor has gone to up like uh, seven floors, with like a uh, hundred households, right? So you see, uh, in 2017, that EA could have had maybe like five, five households in that given structure. But now, since I've completed the flat, there are now like uh, maybe 40 households in the same same in the same same flat. So there is an increase in the number of households. Therefore, that means is if we are if we are if we are to use the EAs for the for the for the if we if we are to use the EAs. Uh, the way they are for uh, for a survey, then you may be having issues even in terms of in terms of waiting. Well, I'm not an expert uh, to talk about that, but um, I, I want now to do the practical part and uh, uh, show you exactly what you're doing. So when the lister gets to the when the lister gets to the ground, uh, they open up and they say, okay, uh, the homesteads. Eh? So I'll I'll write hapa hapa ni kwa. Let's say I'll write zero stroke hapa ni kwa muenda. Okay. Uh, ah yeah, hapa ni kwa muenda. Done. So I open the homestead. Ah uh, kwa muenda. Ah uh, kuna boma tano. Okay. So I go back. Ah uh, yeah, next. Hapa. Boma number one. Hapa ni kwa. Hapa ni kwa kimeu. Right. So for keep oh. At Kimeuze, I'm sorry, I, I can see people don't understand so Hilly, I'm sorry for that. So kwa kime, oh, at Kimeuze, Kimeuze is the name of the homestead, eh? that's the homestead name. There are like 56 households. Eh? Then let's say there's a structure called, um, this is three, this is two stroke. Uh, let's say there's an apartment called uh, Budoski, uh, Budoski apartment, apartment. That's the name of that structure. So Budoski apartment maybe has like uh, 158 households, okay? Now, uh, our system automatically calculates for us and tells us that the total from the query count is 219. Uh, there's need for segmentation. So does this cluster require segmentation? I'll say yes, it requires segmentation. So I'm going to impute the first segment, I'll say maybe the 100, 100, 100 uh, 119. Eh? Now, before I get to, before, I, before, before um, okay, as, okay, yeah, we'll get to, yeah, we're going to get to that. Uh, so let's say this is 119, and then uh, this is 100, okay? So uh, there are some mathematics that uh, are needed for calculation to know the segment that is selected for the purposes of, uh, of segmenting. I'm going to explain briefly in the next five minutes. So does the require, does the cluster, does the, does it need, yeah. So can we reveal the segment? Yes. So it says that the selected segment is select is segment number two. So if I try to pick any other segment, I'm going to get error messages eh, that I'm supposed to actually select segment number two. So this some, just some bit of, some bit of programming. Now, close that part. Remember the map and the list are working together. So I want to open the mapper's application uh, to show you, because there's the file that I sent to you, uh, you'll see a lot of mapper lists. So I want you to understand, when you talk about a mapper, what are we talking about? Which data are these you are getting from the mapper? If you look at your the RMD that I send you or the data file that I send you. Uh, so you need to understand uh, what data are these we are talking about, because at the end of the day, we are going to use R to process those data. So we need to understand, uh, how uh, these data are merged and from what source are they coming from? So I open the mapper's application. Uh, I open it up and uh, it says, 
I need to tap to add information. Now, see this question. Uh, you need to put the points for a quick count to determine the segments. Now, look what we're going to do. Look what we do at the Bureau of Statistics. So we are working together the cartographers to prepare some files I'm going to show you. So when I tap to edit area, uh, that's a world default map. I can pull up some, uh, some maps there. Uh, now, all these are maps. You see, if I open up that, that's a map. I can zoom in. You guys can see, I can zoom in. These are maps, uh, these are TPK files. They are free, freely available. You can create your own files. If you want to create your own files, I can uh, click on uh, Kiambu here. Now this is a map. This is a, this is a, this is a map. Uh, these are the these are the these are the structures in that map. Yeah. So I can I want to click on the map uh, where I am here. So that's where I am. Yeah. So if you see, can you see the blue the blue button? Eh? Now the blue button tells you exactly where you are. So you see, if you send someone to this cluster and they are in that particular place, then it tells them they are not yet in the given cluster. So this is one of the ways we are using to ensure that uh, people are getting to the correct cluster. So if I try zoom here, these are real towers easy. So I need to get to the cluster. So if I move, the more I move, you see, my 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 blue dot is moving. Eh? So I'm, I'm in a building, so that is why the, co the coding may not be very correct. Eh? But you see, if I'm outside in an open area, as I move, I'll be moving with a blue button, okay? So once I'm in the blue button, I need to ensure that I'm within the cluster for me to collect any information. Because every information that is going to be collected here, as you're going to see from the files that you're going to run, eh? we're going to map the information which is collected from these clusters to the respective shape files of these clusters. So these are TPK files. But then the information that we are going to collect here, we are going to map it to the correct shape file. Okay. So this is to guide the e, this to guide this. You remember the first time we said, okay, let's let's click and see where the cluster is. So we clicked on the location and it told us to Machako is 65 kilometers and you need around one, one, one hour and 41 minutes to get there. So when you get there, how do you know you're in the right cluster? Because you see, that is just giving you the direction up to the cluster point. So how do you know you're in the cluster? So how do you ensure that you don't collect information outside the cluster, you see? Because this is a boundary. The yellow line is a boundary of the cluster. This yellow line is a boundary of the cluster. There is a boundary of the cluster. So how do you ensure that you collect information from that given cluster? So this is supposed to guide the RAs in terms of uh, selecting the correct cluster. Now I'll take you back to the list. Remember where we are putting zero stroke uh, Mwenda household there. Eh? So that activity is supposed to run concurrently or simultaneously with this activity. Remember when we said zero stroke, hapa ni kwa Mwenda. So what do I do? Okay, let me change this map. Let me pick a better map. Ah, this is a better map. Ah, look at it. Look at this. I'm at real towers and the dot is showing exactly where I am. Yeah, you see? This is where I am right now. This is where the dot is showing uh, where I am. So this is guiding the array and telling the array, okay, now you need to be exactly at this point, okay? So if I tap anywhere in this map, eh, if I tap, you see, there's a point that has been added in this tab, right? There is that point and it's a zero point because the way this, they are programmed is to ensure that I begin from zero up to, as many points as you want. Now, this point is a GPS point. There's a place you're processing GPS points. Eh? So I want you to know the source of those GPS points. When you talk about a quick count, what are you talking about? So this is a quick count. So once I put that point, I know the, the list is uh, inputting the numbers and says, okay, at this, at this point, there are like 20 households. So if I click again, one, I, it's one now stroke, the name of that, particular structure or that particular homestead and then the number of households which are in that particular homestead so i can pick so i'll be picking the points as the lister is putting that information so i pick the point the lister is putting the information i pick the point the lister is putting the information 
up to the time you're going to go through the whole cluster, putting the points, putting the points. And these are GPS points. Eh? These are TPK file, it's interactive. And every, every place I tap is a GPS point. Now, these points, you're going to map them. If you look at your final RMD, you'll find there's some place you have done some mapping. So I want you to understand the source of this mapping, eh? or, or rather, how are we getting those points? Okay, so these are points from a quick count. So in this case, after we have collected, uh, we've collected information on that, we are going to save that. Now, if you see here, they are saying there are 12 points. Eh? These are 12 points. So those are the 12 structures. These are the number of structures or homesteads in that given cluster. Okay, so we move. Remember where we, we were putting one, 119 and we we're putting 100. So at this case, how many segments have you selected? So I select, I've created two segments, okay? So proceed and segment this cluster because it requires segmentation. So once I click on that, I'll pull out my map again. Uh, this is my map again. I want to see whether I'm in the correct, uh, the correct part. So uh, it's gonna uh, bring the point. So in this case, I want to segment. I now want to segment, uh, cancel that, yeah. So I pull my map, so here we are. So I want to segment. Now segmentation means this cluster has more than required 149 households. So I need to find an area over where I can segment my cluster. So in this case, I want to pass through, oh, can you see this road? Eh? That is how I'm going to say. So we are doing digital segmentation. So this is a digital digital cluster cluster frame creation. Everything is digital here. So I'm gonna click here. That's my first point. That's my other point. That's my other point. I can zoom in and say, okay, I want my segment to pass through here. That's my segment, uh, my segment, I segment until I get to the end of that segment. So if you look at that cluster, I have divided it into two. So after dividing into two, remember what you are asking, uh, click reveal the segment. It automatically gives you the segment number that one you're supposed to list. So in this case, I know I'm either supposed to list this or I'm supposed to list this, the down one. Eh? But I've already segmented. Now, these are still GPS points that are going to be used to create the last cluster by the cartographers. So you see, uh, 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 in this case, we are already using uh, the survey solutions with the cartography. So we are going to see where R is going to come in to complement these two softwares. Okay. So I'll save that. I come here, I add a centroid, uh, I pick them up again. This is a map, I say, okay. My first, this is a first centroid. And uh, you see, I can only put one. It's programmed so that you can only put one point. Remember the other part, the, other, the others you can put several points, but this one, you're only putting one point. I save that. Then I come here, uh, there are no comments. I come here, I put, pull them up, pull them up, uh, zoom and say, okay, my other centroid is here. Okay, I put them up there. So you guys, as you go through the other files, you're able now to understand where the, when, when you talk about a centroid, where is it coming from? When you talk about uh, the, 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 the quick count, you know exactly where it is coming from. When you talk about uh, a segmentation, you exactly know what we are, we are saying or what we are talking about. Great. So after all that has been, uh, after that has been done, uh, the lister, uh, uh, the lister now starts doing the actual listing. So I'm just going to do once one, one scenario. Uh, this is a scenario. They have already selected a segment. So you begin with the first part. Now, I want you to note this. Eh? You see this one to 40, there is somewhere it is appearing on your codes. Eh? And we need to, for you to know what, uh, what uh, those are, eh? then you need to understand eh? what is happening inside here. One to 40, 41 to 80, 81 to 120, 121 to 160, 161 to 200. So when you see that uh, there's that code, eh? you need to understand where it is coming from, okay? So when I open the first part, I'll put structure number one. So I'm doing the actual listing. So I open the structure number one. I say the homestead name is Mwendas, okay? I can pick the GPS. Uh, 
you see by just touching eh, it picks the GPS. So there are two ways we are doing this. We are picking the GPS and we are also tapping to select the GPS. So I'll still pick my area, come here, White House. There we are. So where the cursor stops, that is where I pick my GPS by just tapping. So you have two GPS points, which we are going to compare. You see there is the upper part, the picked GPS and the tap GPS. Why are we insisting on this? Remember, tapping, I can tap anywhere. I can come and tap anywhere, okay? I can just tap anywhere. But once I send the person to the EA, the picked GPS will pick where they are. So we want the two GPSs because we want to ensure the information is as accurate as possible. So there's a tapped and there's a picked. And in your codes, you will see there's a place we are calling them uh, tapped and picked or dunga and, uh, and, and, uh, and picking. So is the structure is residential? Yes. So residential structures are housing some uh, uh, housing units, which concerns the households. So for this case, I'll put one. That's the first housing unit or rather the household. I open up that. House number, I can say A01. Uh, is the housing unit serial number one occupied by a household? Yes. Okay. Name of the household is Mwenda. Uh -huh. Mwenda Ngugi. Sex is male. Uh, main occupation, I'm a statistician. statistician. Okay. Total persons who are living in my household, I can say they are, we are two. Uh, zero to four. Uh, okay, let's say I'm, we are we are three. Uh, let's say I have a, I have a baby called Jules. Uh, yeah. I have a, I have no no other baby zero to four, five to seventeen zero, five to seventeen female is zero, and then uh, eighteen plus male yes it's me, and my wife right okay. So you see, in this case, if I put anything like uh, maybe three, I'm supposed to get an error. The sums are not adding, but we are not here to actually show the pros of programming. Eh? We are here to show how R is complementing these. Eh? But why am I taking some uh, kind of more time here? Because for the codes, you can always run, but if you understand the source, eh, then they make, they are more meaningful than just running the codes for the sake of running the codes. So that's why I'm really actually spending some few minutes here. So do they operate? No. So the other information is basic. So I can go back uh, to ensure that there is no repetition. This program such that if I try put uh, another one again, I'm supposed to get an error that I'm not supposed to duplicate a structure because structures are supposed to be unique and housing units are supposed to be unique. Fantastic. So let's now go to the R code. So we have done that. We have collected the information. We have synchronized and we have sent the information to the server. So now what happens? So I'm going to uh, share my screen again. Let me share my screen again. Um, let me share. So this is, uh, yes, so this is, uh, okay, uh, okay, yes. So here we are. I'm hoping my screen is visible. Uh, yes, it is. We can see the code. Okay. So this is, uh, we begin by uh, doing some cleanup. That's RM list. It uh, deletes everything from the memory. Uh, now, our data, they come in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in several forms. Um, I'm going to open one of the forms here so that um, you understand why we are, why, why, why we are doing this. So, um, hmm. So raw data from the servers, okay. Some data from the servers I'm going to show. So for this, I'll use this for the read SATA 13 is to read the SATA data with their labels. So these are good, uh, a good uh, library for that. DPLR, all of us know these are dialing to everyone. In fact, if you're in R and you're not using DPLR, I don't know how to, what you're using to uh, you know, manipulate your data. Uh, tidy R the same. Uh, string R is basically to okay. Hey, basically okay. Basically to there are sometimes you want to convert your your you guys when you're writing with word. Eh? Uh, there's some place usually they usually say the uppercase, lowercase, sentence case. 
So string R actually will help out in a, in a, in a, in converting those if you want it in a sentence case, uh, like you know uh, the way you guys are you know write your own, uh, stuff. Eh? Yeah. Okay. So uh, having that is for bringing in some new or foreign bring the, the foreign uh, foreign packages like SSS or uh, you know those stuff. A leaflet is for mapping. Uh, SFF so also for mapping. Uh, I don't know. I've repeated these packages. Eh? Yeah. So all that for manipulation. And so we. I'm working from my R. So you can decide to work on your stuff. Eh? On your other, the RMD. You still get the same results. So I'll set my working directly to that because I'm working on R. You working on RMD. So once you run your codes, they are running pretty well. So this is where now the the uh, we, we read our files uh on that and then uh so on that remember we are collecting information on the clusters and these are we have coded our data so we say we there are some information which is not necessary so we say only select which is necessary and this is what is necessary for us and then we rename our files eh, to make sense so if you look at that then these are our data eh? these are our data here they are those are data and uh, those are the information you collected. So you guys, if you run your codes, you're supposed to get exactly what I'm getting. So this is, this is, yeah, this, these are data there. Eh? Well, uh, okay. You're supposed to get, you may not get exactly the Nairobi Garissa stuff, eh? but you're supposed to get the format, the way it is. Okay, this can be, I use, a, I use some dummy cluster numbers, like 999 and 998. That's exactly what you're going to see. Uh, in your in your, in your staff, eh? nine, 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 nine and eight. Then for to ensure that you don't uh, consume a lot of space uh, when you are keeping your files, eh? then uh, I usually write my files in uh, as as dot tabs. Eh? Yeah, I I write my files as as dot tabs. This one is telling me it cannot find. Uh huh. So it's a tab file. So I open the structure. Uh, now remember the structure when you're putting structure number one, two, three in that order, and you are putting in the housing unit in those structures. Eh? So these are we clean. These are we clean those structures. So we need to do some merging of the two structures. I uh, know of the of the file. You know the. Let me explain something here. Uh, I said I'll be having in in on and off. Now remember, when you're doing the cluster creation there is a hierarchy now hierarchy means there's a top a middle and the lower part so the top part is a cluster so within a cluster there are structures within structures there are households okay so there's a cluster there's a there's a cluster there's a structure there's a there are the households within they are within okay 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 so in this case, eh, uh, the this file has. I want some information, which is contained in this file, in the structure, because I want to associate the structure with a given, uh, with a given uh, cluster. Okay, so I need to merge this, and I need to use uh, I need to use a merge, and then I'm merging it by the interview ID. This interview ID. Uh, here it is interview ID. I hope it's here. Oh, it's not here. It's in the ma. It's in the master file. Eh? The interview ID because I did. It. I didn't need interview ID in the in my final file. Because eh? you're saying this is for consumption, so I don't need IDs in my consumption file. Eh? So with that, after merging that, then I'm gonna select those variables which I'm interested in. So I use this this uh, select eh, from DPLRY. Now this is a function. This is a pipe function from DPLYR, very, very important. It really uh, gives you a flexible way of summarizing your data uh, within a very short period of time. So in this case, I want to know the cluster number of our particular uh, structure, the structure ID, the structure number, the GPS, this is the latitude, the longitude, the accuracy, the attitude, the timestamp when that GPS was collected so that uh, someone does not go and pick a GPS at 1 a.m. at night eh, in their house, eh, 
and then they tell you they were in the field. Because the main purpose of the National, uh, National Bureau of Statistics is to ensure data quality. Because remember, once we collect these data, these data are supposed to inform policy. Now imagine informing policy with clusters which are not sampled, simply because someone decided to go to a different cluster and pick some funny GPSs there. Okay, so want to ensure, did you correct, did you collect the GPS? Yes, at what time did you collect this GPS? Okay, so after that, uh, we rename our, 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 we rename our data, and that's how we rename our data to ensure that uh, they are complying. Same class two is not found, and now we rename, it's now found. Uh, that's how we rename our, 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 our files with, uh, with exactly uh, what I was explaining, the accuracy, the GPS, the number of structures. And then we still write our work to uh, make sure that uh, these data, eh, they are going to the correct people. Now, if you look at your folder, if you look at your folder, there are several, there are three files in your folder. The first one is a cattle. That is the data that goes to the cartography. Now, the data that goes to the cartography is supposed to be used to number one, uh, create the class, create the clusters. Eh? Now, remember, if there was any segmentation, the points that you used for segmenting, they are the ones which are going to be used to create these clusters. Then there's other data. We are calling it quality. Now, quality is to ensure that we are checking the quality while people are still in the field. And then there's other part, which is called samplers clean. Now for the samplers clean, that is the data that goes with samplers. So samplers will work together with cartographers, together with the IT people, right? To ensure that we have a functional frame, okay? Now, look at this. We get data from a given software. So now R comes, processes the data to the required formats, okay? So R is bridging, is, bring, is bridging the gap between a given software that was used to collect data and the users, that's the cut of people. Same, same way, R is coming in to show the aspects of quality, okay? Then R is also uh, being used uh, by, the, by, by, by the, R is also being used to process information that are going to be used by the samplers. That's why you see the samplers clean. So all these are working are working together. And that's what I was saying. I we are we are we are bringing R to show you how we are bridging uh, the, the 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 gap between a software and the users, and also how we are maintaining the issues of quality because quality is key and quality is our first priority as a government as a government of, as a government organization are tasked with uh, uh, creating uh, rather uh, rather than collecting uh, official information that is going to use uh, for the issues of policy. Thank you. So here we are, we, we process that, uh, we process that, that's the household, we read the household data, then uh, we merge, we just use R for merging, and then we clean those data and sort them, and uh, uh, here we are, we say, okay, remember, there is something I was telling you about the cluster part, one to 40, you guys, and I was telling you it's gonna come in handy here. You remember one to 40, uh, 41 to 80, uh, 80, 80, 81 to 120, 121 to 160, and 161 to 200. So this is how now we are processing these data. Uh, so here we are, uh, we are creating a new variable, we're calling it uh, str add. And then you are saying case, uh, a case when uh, this is zero, okay, this is zero, okay. Now this is zero to 40. This is supposed to go to uh, ID number one. If it's zero to 40, ID number one. Uh, 40 to 80, number two, 80 to 120, number three in that corner, okay. Now, after that, you're going to group by, that's a cluster number. This close is a cluster number. And then we create a new variable. We are calling it, uh, 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 this is a structure number. And uh, in this structure number, 
We are adding the structure ID. I hope you'll open the raw files and see the structure IDs and these variables we have created here. These are created here and we are saying, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, uh, now for the A02, pick this number, the structure ID, because it's one to 40, one to 40, you know, in, the, in that order. So if it's, it's, it goes from one to 40, the next one, one to 40 again, the next one, one to 40. So for the first part, you only add a zero, okay? You're adding a zero, because you're saying, if the ID, if the cluster part ID is one, then add a zero. If the cluster ID part is two, then add a 40. So if for this part, if the structure part, structure ID is one to 40, then what that means is I'm going to add a zero in that part. So my structure number, there will be one to 40. For the other part, if my structure is a cluster part ID is two, then I'm going to pick the one to 40 and I'm going to add 40 under each of those, of those, of those structures. Such that we we'll now be having structure number one up to the last structure without having those breaks. And that is because because uh, the, the, we didn't find a software which is flexible enough to handle those numbers uh, sequentially the way they are supposed to be, the way they are supposed to be handled. Because uh, the challenge of the software is that the moment you start looping a lot, the more you loop, uh, the less, uh, the, you know, the, the, the more, the more, uh, uh, what do we call these? Eh? Uh, the more, um, the more roosters you create, in other words, uh, the lesser flexibility you have in terms of how much you can be able to accommodate in each and every given rooster. So we're having a rooster, we're having a cluster, uh, within a cluster, okay, we're having a county, within a county there are clusters, within clusters there are structures, within structures there are households. So they are within, 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 within. Now, this is not even the story. Now, I'm gonna show you how R is able to manipulate data the normal data to fit into this because you're going to get there also. So uh, we select this part. So there we are, and there we are, we are done with that. So that's our, that's our, uh, our, our, our house. That's our house. So let's so if I had that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's the information. You see now there's a cluster number, the structure number, the, 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 you know, all the information that we required there, eh? then we write these data in terms of that. So then you move to the cartographies data. Okay, you move to the cartographers, uh, uh, cartographers data. Uh, now, I want to open up this data because it's important for us. It's very important for us. Let me mute my phone. I don't know why it's, yeah, it's important for us. Eh? So I'll open, I want to open some, uh, want to open some data here. Great. So I want to open these R4, these R4 data, because I want to demonstrate something on how these data uh, come in. So let me share my screen. Let me share my, my screen. Where is this? Tata screen, yes. So this is Tata. Yeah, hope it's visible from your side. So I'm opening the R4 data file before I read it eh, to explain to you what, what, what we are doing, eh, exactly what we are doing. So if I browse that, okay, this is, uh, is, is my screen visible, Maggie, confirm, eh? Yes, uh, yes, it's, it's uh, visible. Great, great, great. So these are the data that we collected from the fields. These are the raw data. Now look at how they are coming in, eh? That's how they are hi, coming. Hi, Gugi. Yes, hi. Uh, so there are two questions that I think yeah. you should answer because they are both loading the data. Okay. Uh, so the first question is uh, about why not rename at the same time as you select. I think uh, I think uh, the one who asked this question is Gaka. Sorry if I can't pronounce your name right, but I think sometimes uh, some people do it differently. So I don't. I think is this a personal preference for him? Yeah. But it's uh, something that uh, we can definitely combine, rename, and select and pipe them. Oh yes. I just wanted to, to address that. And then there's someone who asked about you using 
Uh, you loaded a specific package to import starter files where you when you also loaded Haven, which does the same thing. Is there a reason for that? Oh yes, 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 yes. There is a very, very big reason for that. Eh? I would, I would, I would actually not have loaded Haven. Eh? Uh, you see, when you use the read uh, starter that in, eh? uh, there is a way you are able to extract the labels from that given uh, that given file. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'll, uh, I'll, if time allows, I'll demonstrate that. You can extract the variable labels. Eh? Like uh, if, for example, you are coding, you had your data coded, eh? like uh, one is male, two is female. Eh? If, you use, if you use Haven, eh? then they may stay like that. But when you use uh, read starter 13, you can be able to extract those labels. And they tell you, okay, one is male, a two is female. So for that flexibility, and for me to know exactly what I'm working on, I'll prefer read starter 13. So actually you can use one uh, on, on uh, interchangeably, eh? but I find uh, read Sata 13 uh, a bit more flexible for, for my own work. So should I proceed? Yes, yes, yes. proceed. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, this is, this is, uh, this is, I think I've uh, loaded the wrong file. Let me uh, load this S file. Eh? Okay, I'll browse it. Uh, is still is it still visible, my screen? Eh? Yeah, we yes. can see this data. Ah, great, great, great. Now look here. This is how the this is how we download these data from the server. Now this is a challenge that really took us quite a long to try and uh, decode. Eh? So, if you look at all these, eh, a variable a variable name is supposed to be attached to that given value that is given there. But now look at this. When we come here and here, this is where the problem, this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, when you click this, this is actually the segmenting part. You can see, can you see P3, you guys? Eh? You can see P3. Maggie, Maggie, confirm to me you can see P3 and you can see up here the GPS coordinates. No, no, um, I cannot see on my end. Uh, okay, let me, let me share again. Okay, let me share again. Is it yes, okay? Now? No, yeah, no, 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 it's visible. Where is my casa? Read for me that value. Uh, it's so tiny, but I know it's on column P3. I think P3, P3 yes. but it's and, tiny. It's, yeah. uh, you guys, I'm not a good in starter, so how do I expand my screen? You know, I'm, I'm, I have disabilities uh, in using starter, so I don't know how to expand my. Um, um, anyone with a with an idea can can chip in. Yeah, Any participant? You know, yeah, you know how I can extend, how I can uh, you know make this larger for your visibility to explain a very uh, key point. Eh? You can just type oh. in the comments so you can see. Yeah. So anyway, you guys, when you open your starter, you know up here this this P three contains all those segmentation points all of them in one cell. So we were you know, wondering how we're gonna you know, separate these points. So this is where now R came in handy uh, for the separation of these points, because this point, every point is supposed to go to each, uh, to a respective cell, okay? So for that part, so let me uh, share my, my R screen now again. So, uh -huh. so that is a raw data for the futures. Now, here we are. Let me just show you. Uh, oh, yeah, I think it will be visible here properly. So if I view that, uh, it could not find. Okay, let me see. Could not find function V. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So I think these capital letters, yeah, perfect. Here we are. So uh, if you look at, uh, look at this, yeah, look at S1. You see S1, these are GPS, these are GPS points in one, in one cell. Eh? These are GPS points in one cell, or these are GPS points in one cell. And this GPS, we need to have a GPS like this and this you know, this and this, this and this, eh? in that order. Uh, look at the segmentation also. 
uh, segmentation also goes to one cell. Remember those points you were tapping, eh? So uh, this P3 segmentation, the other one I was showing you is actually a quick point, eh? Is a quick, 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 quick count, eh? Quick points, eh? So at this case, how do you use R now to decode that? So is you, uh, let's write that first. So here we are, you select that P3, I've shown you is a quick point. Uh, it has to have that. So now this code decodes and separates those points and puts them in one. Uh, let's see how this one looks like. So I had that seg point. Eh? Uh -huh, that seg point. So there we are. So you see now I have my latitude. I have my longitude and I have my cluster number. So we could not find any other way of decoding those points. So these are the points now. This, now you see with these points, you can be able to map them because now every point has gone to its own cell, okay? So we're just telling R, uh, on P3, Kitiore Nakai kona negative, eh? Uh, up to up to up to up to there then that is make it uh make it uh make it uh make it a long make it a latitude eh? uh in the second in the in the in the subsequent you see in the subsequent eh? the subsequent cell because eh? this this is like the first cell eh? then in the subsequent cell because you have lat long lat long lat long eh? then subsequent cell uh make that out make that a longitude in the in the next subsequent cell okay and then after that you just need to unnest then you have you have that so that is that is very important that's a very key thing uh you guys and then say, same thing the centroids you can unnest the centroids i don't want to waste a lot of time on that and then we now move to the other part of the of the comparing the list as map and the map as data so there we are. So if you look at your look at your your stuff, eh? your, your your folders, eh? you're going to find all these files. Eh? Uh, these are the quality uh, the quality files. Uh, and this in this, I just wanted to uh, maybe just uh, mention that uh, we're using the five okay, or rather the, the 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 few functions available in the DPLRY. Uh, you can see there's a left a left join here. Uh, there's a full join here. Okay. Is a left join, is a full join. Uh, if you look at the raw data and then you look at how you have been able to code, then you'll understand why are we using left join, why are we using full join, why are we using inner join? Because there should be some inner join somewhere. Uh huh. Uh, well, I don't like to uh, talk a lot about about that because time is not on our side. So we move and then um, here we are. We write our code. Okay. So the final part is that part. Click on that, click on that, check that, and here we are. Oh, they're saying the plot is too little. So I'm gonna uh, do again, okay. I don't know the plot, ah, there we are. So from this, you can go to clearly see, uh, there is someone who listed and they didn't, uh, do the mapping. They didn't pick the mapping point. So that's one of the ways of checking the data's quality. There's someone here. This they did the right thing. Uh, these ones did the right thing. Uh, these ones they did the right thing, but these ones they didn't do the right thing. So that's one of the aspects of the quality that we are supposed to like check. So I want to um, give. Uh, uh, so these are the these are the other parts. Uh, the segmentation, you pick all those points, tapping the points, here we are. Uh, so these are just pretty straightforward with the centroids and all that, and then those datas are written to the, to the files. So I want to take uh, two minutes breather, and then when you come back, we are going to do the update, and then uh, we're going to also do the other part. So Chair, can we take a two minute breather, if that's okay with you? At least I get a cup of water. Uh, that's, a, that's okay. Meanwhile, um, if anyone has a question, uh, please feel free to post it on chat.
also um so for something I, I, I don't know if Guki explained, I just wanted to mention is that um, at the office they use both data and R. So don't be shocked when uh, we open a data file and we, I know this is an R session. So for them, they, in the, uh, at the KNBS office, they, they use the two uh, to complement each other uh, because you know, uh, R has strengths more than SETA, so they're trying to move to R, but most of their files are still saved in SETA, uh, so that, that's why uh, we're using that, so that someone doesn't wonder why we uh, we also uh, use SETA to R session, so that, that's why it's, it's a transition that takes time, uh, but this is how uh, R is picking up and trying to fill the gap and do more to the tasks that uh, state has been doing. Yeah, so just in case someone has been wondering. So feel free to type your questions on the chat. I see Kugi's screen moving. Kugi, are you back? Yes, we can proceed. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I want to go back to your RMDs. Eh? Now, these are your RMDs. Let me put on my... I'm on your RMD now, because there's something I want to display here. Uh, when it comes to the issues of now the listing ends there so in that we have our clean data eh? now the next steps is to look for how we are going to update our clusters so remember the first part is creating the actual cluster the next part is about updating that cluster because we are going to use this cluster for the next 10 years so in 10 years a lot of changes happen uh there are a lot of developments some clusters get some clusters gets destroyed some people move like in the northeastern part. Some of them have migrated. Some clusters are destroyed because of war. Uh, some clusters are, have, have increased in terms of, of the size and we need to go and update. So how do we bring in R to now move the data from the way they are into the survey solutions for updating? Remember now we have piped forward, eh? forward piping. Now I want to do the backwards piping. How are you able to use R now to prepare those files to backward uh, backward piping now? We are now moving from, we move from the source to the results. Now we're moving from the results to the source again for the update again. Great. So uh, for you guys who are doing uh, something we call longitudinal studies, eh? you know you don't need to keep on reloading your data every time, okay? You don't need to collect information every time. You need to do to do a preloading of some of this information. So uh, how do we use uh, now R to help us in two ways? Eh? Number one, uh, creating the files as flexible enough to be accommodated by the survey solution. And number two, uh, how do you use R to 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 like create files for 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 like kind of a longitudinal you know study you know how are you able to do that when you're using when you're using survey solutions to collect your data so if you look at your file there's a, a place uh, uh, raw data for preload now these are the processed files the ones you have collected from the field so i'll 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 read that oh no no such file as this so i i may have to uh, read all these again so and I do want to read all this again, you guys. If you run, you run it from your side, I'm sure it's gonna work. Uh, it has worked everywhere. So what you are doing, we're ensuring that there is no household number which is missing. The household numbers are provided by the cartographers. So once you run that code, uh, you ensure that uh, those structures are unique. Someone may have typed wrongly when they are doing their processing or when they are archiving the information. Uh, you're doing the same, same thing uh, to the structures. Uh, ensuring that they, you know you you uh, you you have unique structures in the 
in the, in the, in the cluster. Uh, then I'll use this function to merge that. And then uh, we extract we extract the cluster numbers from the structures. Okay. Then uh, they are pretty straightforward. Uh, they're just looking complicated because they are very long names. Eh? But if you look at the data and you look at these, eh, then it's very, very straightforward. Eh? So here we are uh, assigning those cluster numbers. And then here we are, we are checking the GPS. We want to load the GPS to ensure that uh, the GPS of that, because once we preload this, the person, the GPS is supposed to take him to the given structure, the one that they're supposed to go and work on. Uh, then you convert this to a data frame. Then you write it. This is the first file you write, because we need like four files. Now, remember our 1 to 40. Do you remember our 1 to 40? We began, we began with the 1 to 40 when you were doing the listing, when I was showing you that listing, 1 to 40. Then you went to process, whereby we're using the case. You know, case when, zero, then, Case when zero, then it's zero. Case when one, then 40. Case when two is, now we are here again. We are now to have to convert that data again to fit the a platform with the survey solutions. That is the other software that we are going to use to update our clusters. And remember this talk is about using R to, I mean, how R you know, gives us flexibility of working with other softwares. As it gives, you know, it's providing solutions. You know, solutions is not only about the analysis, but providing that platform that I can be able to merge around the different softwares, eh? then that's good for us. So here we are, we are grouping by the interview ID, I'm mutating and creating a new, a new name called cluster part ID. And we are saying if else, we're using the if else statement here, there's some, some, some few loops here. If else this and these, if else uh, number in 41 to 80, we make a number two. If else number in 81 to 120, number three in that order until then you ungroup, uh, group by again. Okay, this this actually I think the most complex part of this, of this of this tab, and I, I don't want to uh, talk a lot about it. You can just on your free time you can have a look at it. It's pretty straightforward. We are bringing in the aspect of pivot wider. We are converting from long to wide. You guys, uh, you know the issue of long to wide, yeah. And then uh, uh, here we are. We are creating all that, and then we have that part. So that part, we are calling it the cluster cluster tab. So we move to the other part. Um, um, still, you are bringing in the issue of pivot longer. These are interesting uh, things you guys can uh, have a look at. Uh, and there we are. Uh, we go there, we create, we go again and create the other part. Then finally, we create the household part. Uh, these, 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 these are we are. Uh, we 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 getting all those datas with the uniqueness, right? See, so we are using anti join here, uh, left join here. We are merging here. Then we are binding those rows, eh? the these and these. Eh? These are just these are just names. They're just binding them. Eh? These are not they're not statistical names. These are just the names of those variables. So I think this is not something that should scare you. So you need to know understand why we are using the uh, these, eh? this function, DPLR bind, uh, bind rows, instead of just using the, the DPLR, DPLR bind. Eh? So uh, this one is able to, uh, it's, it's, it's merging, it's, it has a magical merging uh, that ensures that no information is lost between the two, the two data sets. Eh? So it merges them without ensuring that no information is lost between the two data sets. Uh, so basically, there we are, uh, we create that. Uh, Pivot Rider comes in again here, uh, if you run this code one by one, it will you'll, you'll really it will really take you very few minutes to understand. Uh, so here we are. We are saying uh, we want to move from long to wide. So pick the prefix that begin with h of six. Uh, the prefix should begin with h of six b, and then uh, give that uh, the serial number. So h of six b one, h of six b two, h of six b three. But remember, the serial number is beginning with what? Minus one. It's a zero. Okay, because our serial numbers, remember, we're beginning with one, two, three. Now here we are saying the first serial number should be a zero. So this H of six B, the first, the first like column will be H of six B zero. Yeah. So we move along until we have our preloaded data. Great. So with that, now 
let's move to the next uh, the next step that I want to show us very fast. That's the last part on um, on uh, margin and data. You guys, you can see my you can see my screen. Eh? So now let's see how very fast we are able to look at some um, how now R is bringing in the geography aspect. So we have already uh, looked at the, the two parts, uh, you know, solving the cartographer's issues. Now, now, how do we bring in R to solve the geography issues at the Bureau of Statistics? So I'm going to do this very fast. In the next few minutes, uh, I should be done. So first things first, I set my working directory, working directory. So this is a C. Okay, I can just pick it here very fast. Okay. Um, where is that? Is that directory? Okay. So I'll do this very, very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, this dash. Okay. Demo. Okay. This, this is my, this, this is my working directory. So I can get to properties. Uh -huh, here I am. So I copy that and come here and say, okay, that's my working directly. That's supposed to give me an error uh, because I need to use the back, where is the back, back, what back, backslash, eh? backslash. So I set my working directly. Yeah, there it is, it's working well. So I need to read some uh, file. I call it um, Makueni file. This is a demo file, demo shape file. So I need to use a function. I need to use um, I need to use this command uh, to read this Makueni file. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, I want this to be called. Uh, I can give it a name like uh, Kenya. Then I say, okay, you can use the read OGR. There it is. And then uh, my folder is called demo, demo, this demo here, see here, look here, this demo, uh, capital S, HP, HP like that. Then I need to read the file called Makueni. Uh, Makueni, ma, Makueni underscore district. Uh, you guys, I don't know if you have Migori. Eh? I, I I just use this for demonstrating. Then uh, we'll I'll show what is shareable uh, district. So that's exactly what to use. So in that case, I'll put this into under quotes so there's no error. It says that uh, that file, uh, this file has. Let me just minimize this. Uh, this file has, yeah. This file has all that. 54 features. Uh, maybe you can get a glimpse of uh, what is there. That, yeah. So these are in that file. Okay. So uh, no, don't worry about that. Yeah. This is a shape file. This when you read it, this is how it comes in. Okay. So we can say now I want to find out about. Um, okay. Let me let me first of all view these calls. I want to demonstrate something here. Kenya. I view Kenya. So this is my data. This is what is most important for me. This, this is the only thing I can be able to manipulate. The other part I am not able to manipulate. So let's say in this data, I want to work with, uh, I want to map some total. Let me just pick this sum total. This is a sum total here. Say, okay, I want to map this sum total. So I'll be working with sum total. So back in my mind, I know I'm working with sum total. Okay. So what I need to know is what is in this sum total? So I can say, okay, let me summarize this. Uh, let me summary uh, Kenya dollar. Uh, this is a sum total. No, that's where it is. So I know very well my minimum value is 1365. Uh, my maximum value is 10, uh, 10, 5, uh, That's the maximum value. So uh, in that case, I can say, okay, if I want to map this, then I, I can create some beans. Uh, yeah. These beans, I can distribute them as these. Eh? So the first can be between one and uh, maybe 2,000. Uh, the next one between 2,000 and uh, maybe 4,000. Okay, the other one between 4,000 and 6,000. The other one between 6,000 uh, 6, and 8,000. Uh, then the other one 10,000. Uh, then the other one, you can have one for 12,000. And the reason you have one for 12,000 is to take care of this guy. You see this guy here, 10, 4, 
10,542. These are the total uh, people who are living in that particular, who exist in that particular sublocation. These are sublocation files, which are shareable. I think uh, whether if I didn't share, then I'm gonna share. Because this is a sublocation for sublocation, which are the EAs for the 2009 census. Yeah. So that takes care of that. So uh, that's, that's my bin. Uh, then there is, oh, uh, I didn't concatenate. I didn't put a concatenate there. Okay, great. Uh, that works well. Uh, now, uh, in that bin, uh, let's say now I want to introduce some colors. Eh? I want to introduce some, some colors which are going to be associated with this uh, with this bin. Some colors are shared with this bin. So I can call these a palette or palette color is a pal. Anything on the right. Any, okay, for those maybe who are new to R, anything on the left has no meaning. You can write anything. You can write anything on the left. There is no meaning on anything on the left. It's just that what is on the left is associated with you know the variable that you put on there. So what you put on the right is actually the key thing. So in that part, I can use this um, uh, color bin, uh, color bin, and uh, for those uh, who do not uh, uh, know about where this is coming from. Uh, color bin is contained in a library called uh, R Calabria. R Calabria. Okay. So uh, these uh, can be found uh, if you just go to a link I'm going to send you, you'll find all the colors which are there. So let's say I want to see which colors are making. Hi, yes. Uh, someone is asking Did you mean census uh, in 2009 or 2019? Uh, well, this is. These are shape files. You see, a, a shape file eh, uh, is a very sensitive uh, is a very sensitive uh, part of an information that is cannot just be uh, given out out there just in public, just to anybody, especially on the on the lower areas, eh, because of the, a lot of issues. Eh? It comes to the issues of uh, maybe you know boundaries. You know, if I want to narrow down to your respective place, if I have your shape file, I can narrow down and know. Okay. Kama kulisemekana hii county kuna mtu tajiri na hii point inaanguka hapa then most probably huyu ni baba ya Musili huyu ndiye anaweza kuwa ako na hii tajiri ama tuseme watu in your, in, your, in your county kuna mtu mmoja peke yake akona ngombe 10000 then you go to the census file and you realize oh hii shape file kuna mtu akona ngombe 10000 who can this be okay this can only be so and so so these are bit sensitive but what i was what i meant is this the shape files i'm going to give you there are sublocation shape files for 2009. Okay, these are 2009 shape files for you to work on them. But there are numerous places to get shape files. If you just go under, uh, and uh, there is a uh, there is some link somewhere, you can just you know Google and uh, download the shape files eh, for free. I think I don't know where I've kept uh, those. I will I will I will I will share immediately after this. Yeah, so I'm gonna display. I want to display. I want to display the colors, eh, which are uh, in the R color brewer. Oh, it says the plot margin is too small. So if I maximize this and rerun my code, yeah. Ah, here they are. So if I zoom this, these are my colors now in the color in the color brewer. These are the colors. This yellow or yellow, orange, red, yellow, orange, blue. So this is how, uh, for those who are doing some spatial or you are interested in doing some spatial kind of analysis, eh? especially for those guys who are uh, in uh, uh, in uh, this Bayesian spatial uh, analysis. Eh? I mean, these are these are the choice of some of the colors you're going to see. So when you look at those nice spatial maps, they have just been created by this, uh, this, this package, but then you need to know how to use it. Eh? So in that case, I'll say, okay, if uh, that's the case, uh, let me uh, minimize this. Uh, I'd say if uh, that's the case, then I can say, okay, let my palette, uh, I had my color here, my color bin here. So I'll say, okay, let me try yellow, orange, red. So I just put it the way it is, eh? yellow, orange, red, like that, okay? Then I can say, okay, for these, I want these to be associated with what? With Kenya dollar. My selected name, eh? that is uh, the sum of the total, eh? uh, sum of the total, okay? So my palette is okay, there are no errors here, my palette is okay. Uh, I can uh, disable this, now I don't need, I don't need that. Eh? So now let's move and create some labels, okay? 
like I told you, what's on the left uh, has no meaning. I can create some labels. I can say, okay, this is paste. Uh, what are you pasting? I'm pasting Kenya dollar. The first, I want the sublocation name because I want when I hover around my map to see the name of that sublocation. So if I select a code, if I hover, I'll be seeing the code. Well, we'll, uh, we will demonstrate and see. So I want the sublocation name uh, in, this, in, this, in this case. Uh, then I can, okay, this is the first sublocation name. Uh, so, uh, here we are, first application name. Great. So that 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 okay. Uh, that that works well. Now let me uh, let me now uh, uh, use these eh? um, to let me create. Um, um, okay. Let let me let me pipe this. Uh, let me just pipe this. Uh, using a apply, uh, using a apply. I don't need these tools. Uh, I need a, a HTML function, HTML tools, tools. Okay, HTML tools, and then this is HTML. Okay, HTML. There we are. Yeah. So those are those are associated with that. So if I look at my labels here. Uh, my labels, okay, yeah, there we are. So every label is associated with uh, with the with that given uh, that given application. So now let's use the leaflet package to create something using our shape files. Remember our shape files, so I can use that. Um, I, I'm giving it just a name. I can use n, a k, whatever. I just use m, and then a uh, leaflet. Yeah, that's a leaflet. So if I run that, I'm supposed to have a uh, uh, if I run that, I'm supposed to have an empty empty map. That's an empty map. Um, so I can say, okay, with this uh, M leaflet, you can add you can add some tiles. You can add some tiles. Yeah. So I want to add the the user provided tiles by piping this. I want to pipe. Yeah, pipe that and say, okay. Uh, add provider tiles provider if, if, if I just write add tiles add tiles like that uh, well if I, I need I'll, I'll need I'll need to specify I need to specify where I want my 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 stuff to sit okay so uh, let me just use uh, add provider tiles because there are numerous provider tiles so I can say pro Providers, providers, okay. Uh, providers, this is what I'm looking for. If I dollar that, you see, all these are, all these are, all these are platforms you can overlay your your, your stuff. Okay, all these, all these are every you can overlay your stuff. So for this, I can say, okay, let me use the Open Street Map. Eh? So if I run that, and then I run that again, I'm able to see my Open Street. That is Open Street. Eh? Yeah. If you need, if you change, if you change this to let's say uh, S3, uh, S3, S3 world imagery, if you run that, then you see that's the S3 map, uh, S3 imagery. Uh, for those who did geography, uh, if you remember the equatorial, no, no, this one is, is green, eh? this is green, uh, this is dry, yeah. I mean, you can zoom, eh? you can zoom to as, as much. As much as possible, we are going to zoom once we once we create something. So I say with that, eh? uh, I want to use the open 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 street open open street map. Uh, then with that, I can say, okay, let me pipe this again, and then I say, okay, in this I want to have um, I want to have I want to add the polygons. So I use leaflet uh, leaflet. And then I put uh, two, I add a polygon, add a polygons. So here, my data will equals to be what? To Kenya. Remember, I read that data. This is the data here. Remember this, Kenya. I am reading the, this, this shape file. Now, you see, we have already read, uh, we've already read our data. That's our shape file. And it is sitting well in the, in the, in the, in the open source. So I can zoom this i can um, have a have a better view so this we have mapped this on the open street eh? so this so uh 
these boundaries are too large. So I can uh, reduce the boundaries uh, just inside here and say, okay, give it a weight, give it a weight of a weight of one. Okay. So the weight reduces the size eh, of uh, that uh, that boundary. Now you see, uh, it's, it's it's a bit more visible and uh, a bit a bit smaller. So I can say now for us to be loading these maps faster, I can then use a smooth factor, factor of one. Okay. So here we are. No 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 loss of changes. So let's say I want to change the boundaries of my shape file. So maybe say orange. So I can say color, color, uh huh, color is equals to orange, uh huh, orange like that. So if I run that, uh, nothing has changed. Uh, okay, I know why it has not changed. Uh, the reason is, uh, for this color, yeah, for this color, I need it into in. Uh, in that, eh? so once I run that, uh, perfect. You see my color has changed eh? to orange. Eh? That's what I wanted. Ah, eh? uh, great. So now, uh, once we once we change once we change the colors, uh, if you look at if you look at this map, eh? if you look at this map, I, I want you to, I want you to, I want to see some difference. Eh? Now I'm going to use. Just take note of this. Eh? I'm just going to write this and ask me the question about it. Eh? Uh, fill opacity. I'll ask me about that later. Uh, this is uh, fill, yeah, fill, fill opacity. Yeah, here it is. I'm going to put one and ask me later why I put that. And I'll explain it uh, more better and uh, it will be more clearer uh, once once we do the example and finish. Then I can say now, okay, what you do? Uh, please fill my colors. Uh, fill color is there uh, with that palette that is associated with what with Kenya dollar uh, sum total eh? uh, sum total here we are okay there we are sum total perfect you see those colors eh? we have already uh, done the change of the colors eh? now if I change my fill opacity to zero look what happens eh? I've changed my fill opacity to zero look what happens it makes it transparent for you to see straight uh, where, where maybe a point is or where a structure is. So our case, because we're trying to do some spatial analysis, trying to show the differences in, uh, in, uh, in, in populations in these given sublocations, then our fill opacity, we put it to one to allow us to be able to have a clear view and a clear look on exactly uh, the differences in this, okay? So this is a fill opacity. That's 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 exactly what uh, fill opacity does. So you can see the changes in uh, in this. Eh? Oh, uh, we forgot to put uh, our labels. Eh? So for us, you see, when we hover, you are seeing nothing. So we want to see when we hover, we want to see something. So what what all we need to tell R is, R please add. You add for us uh, a label. A label is equals to the labels. Eh? Now remember, the labels is uh, what we created. Eh? We created the labels here. Okay. So if I run that and I hover, you see? Now I can see this is Otati, uh, this is Kikumini, this is Ituka, you know, this. Now, if you go and change, if you go and change your, 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 your labels to something else different from, uh, uh, different from uh, this application, okay, let's try something else here. Uh -huh. Let's just try something different here and say, okay, dollar, I want my labels to be first county, okay? So I'm expecting to only have one name, see? Uh -huh. This is what, Makweni. You see now, everywhere I move, everywhere I hover is just Makweni because this is associated with that particular, particular, particular label. So for us to be able to, we need to attach every sublocation to its own name. So every value I put here as my label, if I say, okay, I want to see Actually, I want to see the total, eh? the totals in those uh, given uh, given counties. So once I hover, I'm seeing the totals. Eh? You see these are the totals, the total population in the given sublocation. So in this case, I want my labels to be associated with that uh, that given uh, that given um, uh, first sublocation name, uh, first sublocation, uh, 
first application name. So there we are, so that when I hover over my map, I'm able to see this account, this, this is Kikumini, this is this, this is this. Now. now, after that, we need to add, we need to, have, we need to add a legend. So the same, same thing I'm gonna pipe again. Oh, whoever discovered pipe, eh? uh, may he live long. So I'll say leaflet, then I use my two. Okay, I'm using the wrong thing here. Uh, leaflet, I add legend, add legend. And then uh, I created a, a pal here, a palette here. So I say, okay, my palette is equals to pal, okay? So if I run that, uh, uh, you see, nothing, nothing really happens. Actually, there's supposed to be uh, a small error because I didn't attach the values. I need to attach the values, attach the values. Values is equals to okay. This Kenya dollar. This Kenya dollar. Uh, sum total. You know, Kenya dollar sum total. Okay. So when I run that, I'm supposed to find my values. See, here they are. So if you look at this, it's not very clear. Uh, reason being the opacity, or rather the the. It's not as clear as it's, as it's supposed to be. So how do I make this clear? Then I'm still going to introduce the same same uh, uh, fill opacity. Remember the fill opacity? But now in this case, I'm not gonna use the fill opacity. I'm just going to say opacity, opacity uh, is equals to one, okay? So once I run that, uh, perfect. You see now, it has changed, eh? It has now changed, it's now clear, it's now clearer. And then I'll say, Kitu, I don't want it up there. Yeah, I want it on bottom, bottom left, eh? So position, position is uh, bottom, bottom left. So if I run that, uh, oh, it didn't move. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't put this into that. Perfect. Uh, here we have our map. Uh, we can zoom it in. So we have uh, created a palette and here we are. Our stuff is on bottom left. Great. So uh, I, that is on this. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I just want to read a question out because uh, it's about the leaflet map before uh -huh. you move on. Yes. So the question is, uh, could you, uh, sorry, uh, uh, could you provide more than one piece of information on the same cover like uh, total and country, for instance? On the levels that you're talking about? Uh, yes, it's possible. But uh, what you need to do first, eh? Uh, great. Can I can I answer you that with a demonstration, kindly, if you don't mind? Eh? I can answer yes. that with a, uh, also, with, a, with a real with a real demonstration here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I also just wanted to tell you like we have our time is running now. Okay. So, so maybe uh, ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, ten minutes. Yeah, I'll be done. I'll be done by ten minutes. Eh? So now the last part is uh, the issues of. Um, uh, I want to take you back to to our issues of. Um, you know that those points we are collecting. Eh? So we want to do some. Uh, we want to do some mapping here on the points that the points that uh, the points that we are collecting. So I want to read. I want to read some. I want to read some shape files again. Uh, they are here. Uh, these are the five Kenyan uh, shape files. Oh, they are here. The shape files are here. So I want to read some uh, shape files. And then I want to also map them because I want to demonstrate something. So I can call these uh, Kenya Kenya five. These are only five shape files. Uh, shape, okay. So I'll use a different function here. I'll use, or rather I'll, I'll read this differently because I want to demonstrate something differently. So I'll use st, st, st read, st read. Okay, read, yeah, st read. Uh, this is an SFF, SF, the SF package. And then I'm gonna read these uh, shape files. Uh, stroke. It's in SS stroke. It's called five underscore counties. Eh? Uh, counties uh, dot shape. Remember the first one we didn't use. We didn't use a dot shape. Okay. Uh, this says what? Uh, cannot open the. Doesn't exist. Let me just look at these again. This. Okay. 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 So this is a uh, shape files five counties dot. Okay, let me just uh, pull this. 
okay con this uh, pull that copy that maybe from here and uh, paste that perfect so there we are uh, you can uh, maybe have a glimpse of that also if you if, if need be Kenya five shape yeah that's a glimpse these are polygons with the uh, there are five columns the county name and uh, the totals eh, for that eh? so our interest uh, our interest lies here our interest lies in uh, some I want to demonstrate some uh, some uh, some data some data the data that we collected there. Eh? So I want to demonstrate a real, a real, a real scenario. So I'm going to read uh, a shape file for Mombasa. Mombasa, you can call it Mombasa shape. Okay, uh, Mombasa shape. Uh, this is um, ST read again, ST read. Let me just extract this from the shape file and no, no, paste that. Uh, there we are. That's a Mombasa shape file. Uh, you can also still have a glimpse, but um, well, uh, yeah, it, it may be important because uh, we need to know uh, Mombasa. Mombasa. That's a Mombasa shape. You saw it, it has more attributes because we may need we may need these eh, the names eh, to map the names. Eh? And I'm going to answer these with a question that uh, that person asked. Ah, uh, good. So for this, then we can proceed and. Uh, still use the leaf, the leaflet uh, the leaflet maps so i can say okay there is a leaflet uh, leaflet okay i can call this k uh, this uh, leaflet okay and then uh, you see that the same same thing we are going to get an empty map there so i'll add provider uh, providers i'll add provider tiles and the provider tiles. So I'll say, okay, these are providers, uh, providers, uh, providers dollar uh, imagery. I need the S3 imagery, S3 world imagery. Okay. So after that, I'll need to add, uh, I add the polygons now straight away. I just need to add the polygons. So I'll add polygons, polygons, there we are. So my data. Uh, is equals to, yeah, my data is equals to. So we have the Kenya, Kenya shape, Kenya five shape. Remember it is there, okay. So if I that I do that, uh, okay, there we are. So those are the five, the five files again. So I don't want to repeat a lot about this. So I'm going to uh, make it, uh, make the legend a bit uh, thin, and then I'm also going to make. The color. I'm going to change the color. Okay, color to yellow. Uh, yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, make sure the opacity is is zero, and I will explain that. Fill opacity. Opacity uh, is equal to zero, and then I'm going to do this. Uh, uh, see, once I do that. Eh, uh, now, when I zoom through my map, eh, it's clear it can be seen from wherever anybody is. Eh? Uh, it's clear because my fill opacity, when I say zero, then I'm saying don't put anything on top. Okay. Okay. Now I can't see uh, which counties these are. So I'll say, okay. Suppose I want to see my counties. I'll say, okay, now please pop up. Uh, pop up is equals to uh, the first, I want the first county. Uh, first county. Uh, the first, uh, first county. Okay, the glimpse here. Uh, when we glimpse this, when we glimpse that. Uh, this is what we need: the first county. So that when I hover or when I touch, uh, if I do that, okay, pop up. Okay, supposed to be one equal sign. Yeah. So now you see when I touch that. Okay, sorry. When I touch that, it's telling me that's Kajiado. When I touch any other part, it's telling me that's Machako, that's Nairobi, that's Kiambu. Great. So, uh, in that case, uh, let's say now I want to, I can add more polygons. Uh, I can add now the Mombasa polygon. So I'm just going to copy, just going to copy this, just going to copy this, the whole of this, and then I'm gonna copy that. I'm just going to pipe that, pipe that. Okay. 
Mombasa. So I'll enter that. So these will be Mombasa. So I'll say this Mombasa, Mombasa She. So uh, first count is not found on Mombasa because when I glimpse Mombasa, I want this to be associated with this particular EA. So there's the EA name. So I click on that and then come here and paste and uh, paste there. So here we are. So Mombasa, uh, you may not be able to see it, but kuna mali kama jificha uko chini, if you guys can see here. This is a Mombasa. This is a Mombasa, it's hidden here with that shaped file. Eh? And you can see it's very clear. Now that's the EA. These are, these are, these are, these are EA called Munazimoja. This is another EA. Now I've used the EA name for the whole of this. So the name that will be coming up is just that. So this is the EA we're interested in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to map to bring in those information uh, that you guys, uh, you guys have. So I'm just going to copy my whole uh, command and explain to you what uh, that means. So I'm going to pipe that. Uh, pipe that then I'm going to add that. Eh? So what this does is um, um, okay, let me just run and then uh, and then explain to you what is happening. So here we are. Uh, our interest is here in this county called Mombasa County. Uh, that's where our interest is because these are the points that we picked uh, from uh, the field. So here we are, here we are. So remember, a quick count. This is our quick count. We segmented with a white line, that's a segment. We listed, and finally, uh, we we pick the GPS, we tap the GPS, and this is our selected, these are selected, our selected centroids. So to answer that question, yes, it is possible to have uh, uh, to have that uh, that uh, that that part, but then you need to have it as one name. So when you're preparing your shape files, eh? if for example, you want to see the county and the population, you can say Mombasa uh, underscore maybe uh, 10,000. So that when you hover, you'll be able to see, because you, you can only be able to pop up one name at a time. So when you hover and you and uh, for that pop up to come on your, on your, on your, on your file, eh? then you just need to have uh, one, 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 one name. So without much ado, there's a lot where we can talk about um, in this, but this will be the, these are the part of the final products and uh, we are open for collaboration. You think if there's anything you can um, help us to add to make our work easy, or maybe you can create a, maybe a better function, please. We we'll really appreciate. So to, to all the organizers of our ladies, I want to take the meeting back to you. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Um, I'm humbled. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gugi, for that. And thank you for the way you explained uh, the questions. So we just have two questions uh, that uh, you can answer quickly before we hand over this back to Maggie. Uh, uh, one question was asked by, is it possible to use R without having a downloaded data? And thank you, Nelson, because he answered it right. Uh, he said that uh, we, are doing, uh, uh, we just need uh, R to... Sorry, let me just, yes, if all we are doing is reading SETA files, you don't need to have SETA installed in your machine. R runs is independent of R. So if you have SETA files and you want to read them into R, you just need a function. We have Haven and we have other functions, uh, packages, sorry, and you can read that. So you don't have to have both SETA and uh, R installed. Um, so two questions for you, uh, Cookie, is, um, uh, just uh, this, I don't know if you're the right person to answer this, but it's just basically about KNBS and share files. Uh, after how long does KNBS distribute the updated share files? Example for 2019, because um, sometimes I think KNBS has the most updated uh, share files, but uh, it takes time to uh, to distribute that for uh, public queues. Example, if it's uh, constituencies or districts or sub district sometimes we look for those share files that you don't have but we we know that uh, kenbis has i don't know whose mandate it is to share that and after how long so that is the first question uh, the second question uh, for the map that you've just generated in leaflet is it possible to publish this map on one, uh, one's website or page that uh, the second one uh, let me just check quickly at the chat if there's any other new question um uh, yeah, there's also one uh, that question, uh, general question. Why does KNPS publish data in PDF files? 
uh, maybe you can also answer that. Um, uh, let me check for Noah. Thank you, ladies. Um, yeah, that was just saying thank you. So I think you have three questions. Maybe you can take uh, the shortest time to answer them, and then we can give this back to Maggie. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you for those questions. Well, um, in terms of uh, the shape files, eh, they can be available upon request. You just need to talk to the director general and uh, you know say why you need the shape files up to what level and what you want to do with them. So that is available anytime you want. So you just talk to our DG. He's the only person who's authorized to allow photo shape files. So yes, they're available. They can be available. And if you want them, you talk to the DG, he'll be able to give you the the correct uh, direction then eh? uh, the other thing eh? okay why do we publish okay is this okay first of all is this publishable yes it is because you see the purpose of interactive uh is um uh actually the reason why we are okay i don't know why would you want to publish you want to publish a leaflet as a static map or as an interactive map because if you have a if you have a if you have a website eh, then it's possible to like have a link eh? and uh, you can be able to zoom in uh, zoom in or out. Eh? But if you want to put this on a paper, then you have to, unless you take a, a screenshot or a snipe and then uh, no, put it on a put it on a paper. But you know that be the logic of the purpose of the leaflet. Eh? Unless unless you you creating unless you want to publish like the maps that I was had shown you earlier, the spatial map, eh? you want to put it on a book, eh? then you can take a screenshot and then you can put it on a book and then provide a link and say, okay, for those who want to have a more interaction on this, then this is the available link. So why do you publish data in PDF? Okay, that's a very, very, very difficult question. I think um, uh, all of us, we, all of us, we, okay, we have choices on how to disseminate our data. Uh, so I think uh, I may not be able to answer that for now, eh? but I can, I'll try find out an eh? uh, appropriate answer and then I'm going to give you the correct answer. So uh, you can you can also write the DG, ask him, hey, when a DG, why do you publish data in PDF? And then the DG may be the right person to answer that question. I think I've answered all my questions, Faith. Yes, uh, you. you have. Uh, Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so yeah, about the DG, uh, Shell Myth is saying, uh, is laughing because it's very difficult to reach out to that. Uh, I thought KBS has an open, uh, I think open data website or something. So yeah. sometimes you go there to look for data and yes. sometimes you expect to have the updated shape files, but I understand uh, it takes time. Uh, actually, I asked someone and the survey of Kenya is the body mandated uh, to distribute share files and to create share files. Mm -hmm. So KNBS just complements that, but survey of Kenya is the, the body that actually mandated by the Kenyan government to do that. I once upon a time asked. Um, so there are two questions here for Collins, uh, who was asking about website and pages. Uh, let me uh, answer this also. You can, for a website, you can publish an interactive map. Uh, and also there, are, if you're using blog down and or all these are based uh, website development um, uh, uh, libraries, it is very easy to do that. So in case you have your own website, it is to do that. But in case you, you want to publish that on a page or a static uh, thing, you have to take a, a screenshot or use uh, packages like SF or RGDAL to actually do that. But if it's an a interactive app on a website, that is very possible. Uh, about, I'm just taking about everyone asking for the recording. Some of you have shared your emails with me, but I just want, uh, I think Maggie will say it, but I just want to tell you that uh, just the way you receive this link and passcode through the meetup, because you're part of the meetup, that's the same way we share the recording. So you, 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 going to see an email uh, pop up from Meetup and uh, your ma materials will be there uh, latest by Monday or Tuesday. In case you don't do this, now uh, you don't get uh, via Meetup, uh, our social media platforms we publish this, we hopefully by Tuesday. Uh, so please uh, just check uh, for your email, uh, Meetup, and then you're going to get a recording, uh, a link to recording on YouTube. We always publish the recording after Meetup through our social media platforms and also through Meetup. Um, so uh, I've seen so many questions around the recording, so don't worry. In case you don't get this by, let's say Wednesday, uh, our last slide, Maggie will share, it. he has our contact details, so you can find us on social media or meetup. Please ask for it. 
available, but I don't think that has happened. We will share that on time. Uh, I don't know if there's any other question because I can't see any. In case I have not uh, um, asked your question, raise your hand, please. And I'm going to unmute you and you're going to ask your question. So I'm just going to check this for one minute. Raise your hand in case you have a question or you typed your question in the chat and I did not ask the question, please. Uh, no one? Okay. Okay, no one. So I think we have answered all the questions. Uh, Maggie, uh, back to you. Thank you, Guki, for this. Thank you, thank you, Faith. Um, allow me to just share my screen where we have our contact details. Yes, so um, thank you so much, Ngugi, for the insightful session. Um, personally, I've really learned a lot with regards to the step one from the survey solutions, which captures information um, all the way that is taken to the server and then reading them into R all the way to the interactive mapping. Um, thank you so much for taking us through uh, the step-by-step -step, um, process. I'm sure there's so much more um, in store, but um, we really appreciate you um, giving us um, an overview um, of how to do this um, in R. So the recording, um, kind reminder that the recording will be shared on Meetup as well as um, on our social media platforms as displayed on the screen. And um, thank you so much for attending today's Meetup. Uh, we really appreciate and we look forward to um, seeing you um, attending more of our Meetups. And um, just a kind reminder that um, our next Meetup uh, session will be um, announced um, as soon as possible. So just be on the lookout um, on our social media platforms. So yeah, so that marks the end of the meetup. So feel free to leave at your own um, convenience. And uh, just a kind reminder that if you'd wish to train at our meetups, we are open to that. And our on our Twitter platform, you'll see a pinned tweet that displays a, a link to a form. So in case you'd wish to train, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. So thank you so much and um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye. You can switch on your camera and say bye if you wish. Bye. Bye, everyone.